Happy Halloween, everyone. I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And I'm Rich Evans. And uh, we're going to watch Halloween, John Carpenter's classic, Halloween. So grab your pumpkin beer and uh, candy corn. That's right. Rich, do you have your candy corn and or pumpkin beer? No, I don't have either of those things. I'm being offered some candy corn, though, and I'm, I'm refusing because by, it's by candy corn. By a mysterious corn. force? <laughs> Where'd that candy corn come from? <laughs> Nancy Loomis as Ann, as, uh, as, what did it say? Annie Brackett. Yeah. Isn't Dr. Loomis? Don yeah, yeah, it's a weird, a, a weird coincidence that, uh, yeah, Sam Loomis, Sam Loomis is Donald Pleasance, which is a reference to Psycho, and then they cast an actress whose actual last name is Loomis. Shocking. Annie, Annie Brackett is the one that ends up without pants at a certain point in the movie. Oh. Dean Cundy. This is this was a horrible shock to me the other day. I was looking up Dean Cundy because I was watching this and Halloween 2. I was like, man, these are some good looking movies. The cinematography is great. And I knew he went on to do the Back to the Future movies. He did Jurassic Park, Apollo 13, all these big movies. I was like, what's he done lately? And I looked him up. Uh, you know what he did? Wait. Tell us in a second, do you know anything about Cool Lesby? <laughs> I do not. I want my first name to be Cool, K-O-O-L. Was that a credit that said Cool Lesby? Luz, L-U-S-B-Y, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, continue. That's a pretty great name. Um, oh, yeah, so uh, uh, Dean Isn't Cundy. Isn't Deborah Hill a producer on Aliens? I don't think so. Walter Hill. Mm. Deborah Hill uh, co-wrote this with John Carpenter. They yeah, were they right. were uh, an item at the time. Haddonfield, Illinois is a fictional town, by the way. Haddonfield, Illinois is not a real place, no. no. And this was clearly shot in California. But continue with your Dean <laughs> Dean Cundy story. Oh yeah, well Dean Cundy, what do you what kind of you know what do you think he'd be up to these days as someone that's worked on such huge hits as Back to the Future and Jurassic Park? Don't know, Jay. He did Jack and Jill. <laughs> It's a long way down, Jay. I know. That was shocking to me. Jack and Jill, the Garfield movie. I'm shocked that Jack and Jill even had a cinematographer. I, yeah, I thought that whole movie was shot on a cell phone. Although working on an Adam Sandler production means you got paid. That's true. I guess it's he decided that he was tired of uh, doing creative work, good uh, cinematic-looking material, and he would just uh, uh, point a softbox at someone and sit back and collect his paycheck. Have, have you considered that maybe he couldn't adapt to green screens? Like maybe he's such a good cinematographer that he couldn't handle framing up a shot that's just two people oh. in front of a green wall. Oh, that's entirely possible. Well, instead of making fun of Adam Sandler, we <laughs> probably should be talking about the groundbreaking uh, Steadicam one take shot that this yes. movie opens with. Although it's not actually one take. It's, There's a couple it's hidden It's several cuts. breaks in it, yes. But, but it's still very impressive, even though you see the, the shadow of the camera in a couple parts coming up here. Now, I, I might be wrong, but wasn't the Steadicam invented on this movie? Uh, no, it was, I think the, I could be wrong. I think the first movie to use the Steadicam was Rocky. It okay. was one of the very early ones. And technically this movie is not the Steadicam, it's, yeah. it's Panavision's version of it. It's called the Panaglide. Okay. Um, it was like sort of their attempt to make a Steadicam. Yeah. Um, and it's very impressive. I mean, that's what makes this movie is the visuals yeah. and the, the flowing camera work. It's very dreamlike. Right, right. I, I think it should be pointed out when, you know, and I think a lot of people in your, your uh, Mr. Plinkett review for Revenge of the Sith, mm -hmm. you complain about that opening shot. I think people think you're complaining about the CGI and not the fact that it's one continuous shot and that's not a big deal because it was CGI. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was nothing like this. But when you're when you're working with real people and you don't have digital effects, like getting just one continuous shot of something and having sure. everything go right and everybody doesn't fuck up well, their lines. Oh, wait, wait, and... look in the corner here on the right. There. Oh, fuck, I missed it. It must have been an earlier shot when he went through the other door. You can see the shadow of the camera. On maybe, the wall. maybe, yeah. maybe they fixed it. No, they didn't. I, I know it's in here. Well, I, I see what you're saying, Rich. I mean, it, it's a definitely more impressive in what is this, 1978? Yes. Oh wait, there oh, it is. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> when they didn't have you know digital tools to erase and fix yeah. things, yeah. because this was. I, I watched a, a documentary about this, and this was like, okay, now we're going up the stairs. 
the one the camera panned over to the right, somebody ran up the stairs real quick in order to go flip this light on. They, yeah, and right now on the bottom of the stairs, they're readjusting all the lights for yes. when he comes back down the right. stairs. Right, right. This is, yeah, it's complicated technical and stuff. Everything has to continue to go right for like 10 minutes or however long. But yeah, yeah. Well, here's, here's a cut. There's mm. a cut. Still impressive, but I just got word that the Steadicam was first used in the 1976 film Bound for Glory. Oh, okay. So it was not it Rocky. It was not Rocky. Was I know Rocky was one close, of the early ones. Very but. close. So, Jay, you were dead wrong. Dead wrong. Well, that's the first time that's ever happened. And this, the, the hands of little Michael Myers here are Deborah Hill's hands. The co-writer. That's grabbing her boobs? That, that's stabbing Oh, her. that's that's her own And hands. for some reason, Michael Myers looks up at his own hand while he stabs, but that's okay. Yeah. It's forgivable in the context yeah, you gotta of a show, movie. Yeah, that, that was so probably someone could splash some blood on her. Probably, yeah. And then pan back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, now, now Michael Myers is going back down the stairs. There was another I saw, cut, I saw I think. an edit there, yeah. And now people have readjusted all these lights. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, this was a, an attempt at doing it all in one shot, and then they married a couple different takes together yeah, in editing. Yeah, they, they, they couldn't quite pull it off. Yeah. You know. Still very impressive. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that this house, the way the house looks in the rest of the movie, that's how the house actually looked. It was abandoned and old, and they were going to tear it down. Right. So after they shot all that stuff, they went back and cleaned the entire place up just for this one uh, little sequence. I always, thought, I always thought this shot was creepy as a kid. Just They're just staring at him. They're just staring, yeah. This this is one of those really early memory movies for me where you watched it a hundred times as a kid and all these things just stick with you. Yeah. Especially this shot. I imagery sticks with you more when uh, they hold on a shot for more than five seconds. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's not just quick cutting. It doesn't happen anymore. No, this is... I, I'm. I, always, I try to picture, like, younger people that have seen tons and tons of horror movies that grew up on, like, the Saw movies and stuff watching this and just being bored out of their minds. Oh, sure. Because this is a very slow-moving movie. In a good way. <laughs> and here we have uh, Donald Pleasance. Good old went, Donald Pleasant. Who, who went on to be the best part of a uh, continuing series that just got worse and worse. He was always the best part because he got crazier and crazier as the movies went along. He is overacting so much in Halloween 5, it's great. Yeah. Well, that, that was his final one, right? <laughs> Halloween 6 was his final one. That's where they, six? Okay. they shot the movie, and it was so terrible they went and did reshoots, but he had died by the time they did the reshoots, so they did this really awkwardly edited ending to the movie where he says, I have some business to attend to. And then they just cut to the, the Michael Myers mask on the mm -hmm. ground and you hear him yell yep. off camera. I, I saw I saw that movie in the theater. I did too, yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. That was, that was I think that was shortly before Scream. It like, was, Kind of revived yeah. horror movies. I remember seeing Halloween 6 and uh, Hellraiser Bloodlines. Oh, I the fourth think. one in space? In the yes, I, I think. In, in <laughs> theaters. And it was like no one was in there. Yeah. No one saw those like the tail end of the eighties, early nineties horror movies and then Scream revived the horror genre. Yeah. But I remember like they throw the mask on the ground and you hear just some crew member just go, ah! No, it is him yelling. It's, oh, it's, audio, from a different... it's audio from the original uh, version okay. of the ending. It just sounds like a different person. And yeah, it sounds, it sounds like... completely bullshit. And then uh, then it cuts to black and a credit comes up that says, in memory of yeah. Donald Pleasance. It's the most horrible way to yeah. end your career. <laughs> so sad. Poor Donald Pleasance. What, what is the original ending? Oh, God. It's this whole thing with this cult and there's like magic stones. <laughs> and... <laughs> And Paul, Paul Rudd is in it before Paul Rudd is anybody. Paul Rudd plays the grown-up version of the little kid who's being babysat here. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. He plays the grown-up version of that kid, and he. This is a creepy image too. Yeah, this is one of the things I remember. Just these these uh, insane asylum patients wandering around, and they're, they're they, and it just goes off into darkness, and you can barely see what's happening. Yeah, this part creeped me out as a kid. Isn't it kind of funny what happened to the Halloween series, though? It started off just about a serial killer, Michael Myers and Crazy Man, and then you get genetic engineering, and apparently it <laughs> almost ended with cults and magic stones. Yeah, yeah. Paul Rudd puts the magic stones in a circle on the ground, and then when Michael Myers walks into it, he's paralyzed, and he can't move anymore. 
Did that happen in the film? That happened in the, the original ending. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. As I was going to say, I don't remember anything about the sixth one. Yeah, no. The, the cult stuff is still in there. I remember it's the, just terrible. The fifth one, I think the little girl's name was Jamie. Yeah. And, there was, and it was she uh, takes uh, Laurie over. Strode's daughter. Yeah. She's in the fourth one, too. And they, and that's how the fourth one ends. Or the fifth one ends. I can't recall. The, where. the fourth one ends like this one begins. Yeah, where she's where in a clown She's in a clown costume. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting ending. And then they completely blew it with the next one. Yeah, I remember this is Yeah, this is probably out of the uh, the the big franchises of that era. Like this, Jason and Freddy. This is probably the worst franchise. You think so? I think so. Because most of the sequels are kind of bland and then they get stupid it does like the, even I, the the friday the 13th movies are worse but they're more entertaining because that series was yeah. junk from the start that was a ripoff of this the first friday the 13th is just a ripoff of halloween really admittedly so by sean cunningham yeah he's hmm. like they watched this movie they looked at all the techniques used as far as the camera work goes and the killer's point of view shots and and just did it again <laughs> But this series started off like this shouldn't be a series. This is a standalone no, movie. Yeah, it's such a simple story. Crazy guy kills people because he's crazy, and that's well. It. Well, that's that's why they did what they did with the third one, where mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with Michael Myers, and it's about haunted. Were they, were they haunted masks or were they? they, they, they <laughs> oh man, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really want to get into the third you. one. Yeah. yeah, the third one is amazing. Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit later. But all or, right. <laughs> well, I, this one's less about like a. a "Quote unquote serial killer, and more so like the embodiment of evil. Right. Yeah. It, it has a more. It operates on a different plane his, than his just a. His motive is that he's pure evil. Yeah, sort of like the the faceless killer. Yeah. And I think that's what they were going for. And then and then to, to um, make a series out of that, is con contradictory to the original mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Is that pu pure evil exists and then it's gone. And that's like okay, now he's a guy. And we gotta put him on the truck, and, and then it becomes a <laughs> then it becomes schlock after that. But not schlocky enough. I think that's the problem. Those Halloween yeah. sequels are kind of like part four is okay, but it's I like kind part of bland. four quite a bit. Part four has its moments, and the ending's pretty good. Uh, other than the first one, part four is one is my favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. It's almost like a remake. Yeah, well, it one. was sort of like part three, everybody hated because yeah. Michael Myers wasn't in it. So like, here's Michael Myers again. We're not going to take any risks. <laughs> it's just him doing his thing. Yeah. I barely remember what happens in two. I remember they make it an extension of the same night. It, it ends exactly yeah. where this one, uh, or starts where this one ends. Yeah. And uh, Laurie Strode Mostly goes to the it, hospital and does nothing for 90% of the movie. It takes place in a, you know, all I remember is this, uh, she or Donald Pleasance turns on the gas line and lights a match and yeah. Michael Myers starts on fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Loomis and Michael Myers yeah. die in an explosion until part four when he just has a tiny uh, scar on his cheek. Yep. And then he survives <laughs> a gas station explosion. Yes. <laughs> He's just as uh, uh, adept at survive, survival as Michael Myers He's is. He's fireproof. He's fireproof. So there's Tommy Doyle who would grow up to be Paul Rudd. Which reminds me, you mentioned Hellraiser Bloodline. Yes. Do you know who's in that movie? Mm, I, uh, I... A Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation. Oh, is he? I, it might be his first movie. He's really young in it, but yeah. All, the, all these modern uh, comedic actors that started out in horrible horror sequels. Yeah, they should bring back Pinhead. I'm sure they have on on, on home video. There, uh, there's so many Pinhead sequels, like direct -to video sequels. Even I stopped paying attention to that series. <gasps> dun dun. There he is. There's Michael Myers, broad daylight. Yeah. So many creepy things in this movie. <laughs> it's so simple. It's like uh, he went and just stripped everything down. Yeah. Laurie Strode you know, innocence and Michael Myers evil and that's all. Yeah. No, no, uh, nothing wacky, nothing crazy. No, it's nice. all you know, killer by the full moon of the 17th <laughs> yeah, anniversary yeah. of the... It's, it's all about the, the tension and the buildup. It's not about the, the kills because there's very few. Yeah. It's, it's all about the atmosphere. This movie has great atmosphere. The look of this, even though it's shot in Southern California, so much of it passes for the Midwest even though you occasionally see a palm tree in the background. 
well, I, I don't know. I, I never got the vibe that this is in the Midwest. Oh, really? Ever. I I, I bought it as a kid. It never bothered me. Fall leaves in front of the camera lens. It's, it's sort of charming like now right watch, there. when you watch it and you see there's a couple <laughs> leaves in front of the, and yeah. you look down the block and there's no leaves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I guess they had like four bags of leaves and they would just throw them on the ground. Then after each take, everyone would have to gather up the leaves and put them in the bag and move them to the next location. <laughs> There's a Nightmare on Elm Street shot. Oh, yeah. This makes me think of that. Girl in the classroom. Sure. Maybe the Nightmare on Elm Street shot should be called oh, the creepy. Halloween shot. It should. This came first. Yeah, yeah just the, the stillness of Michael Myers. He's just standing there. There's no musical sting or, like, jump scare stuff. He's just standing there. The shot when he's standing in the laundry is something that always sticks out in my memory, too. In the laundry? Th there's, like, laundry out to dry, and I think he's just standing in the backyard when she's babysitting. and then Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, back. that's coming up in a little bit. <laughs> Took off in his stolen uh, station <laughs> wagon from the mental hospital. That is one weird thing. There's a couple problems with this movie. What is the fact that he can drive? No yeah. problems. And, <laughs> He's been incarcerated since he was a small no, child. No uh, middle school in the Midwest has outdoor classroom entrance either. <laughs> That's, That's true. Specifically a West Coast thing. <laughs> the boogeyman's coming. The boogeyman. I was so bad for him here when his pumpkin breaks. Yeah, yeah. This poor kid. Now that you're pointing these California things out to me, Mike, I, I, this movie will be ruined for me now. I'm so sorry, Rich. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't unlearn that. I'm aware of all that stuff. Like I'll probably point out the palm trees in the background later on, but there's still there's something about it that like the the color temperature looks is like it looks like like breezy Midwest in, well, in it's, October. It's, it's very overcast looking. It's yeah, not it doesn't look colorful. like sunny California. Yeah. Because now, now I'm picturing, you know, being a kid again, going to class in the middle of February. <laughs> That's insane. Having, having to go outside yeah. to get to your class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't build schools like that here, Rich. No. There's their leaves. That's all they got. <laughs> And there goes Michael Myers in his car that he knows how to drive. Do they explain where he gets his jumpsuit, that it's a mechanics, or is that, that specifically in four? Uh, do they Does, even explain it in four? They do. That's okay. a garage mechanic. Oh, that's right, because he's, he's all bandaged up, and he yeah. goes there and he steals it. Yeah. yeah. No, they don't in this. This but is just, he just gets an outfit. Somewhere. This is this is why you need a prequel remake, where Rob Zombie explains that uh, Ken Voorhees is taking a dump, and Michael Myers uh, punches him to death and then steals his mechanic's jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's why you need a prequel remake. Prequel remake? The Rob Zombie movie. So you're saying you haven't seen it. I know it's it. a remake. I haven't seen it. It's a prequel, too? The I, first, you know, the, the creepy opening of this? Yeah. Where you see him stab his sister? That's the first 45 minutes of the movie. Okay. Um, and then the second half of the movie is almost a scene-for-scene scene remake of this movie, but sped up because the movie's half over. Oh. <laughs> that's the movie. And Michael Myers lives in a crazy house with like a drunken father. Yeah, it's a white trash family. And His mom's a stripper. It's eh. it's horrifically yeah. bad. Yeah. Although I, I don't mind the first half of it I was because just it's say that. so disconnected yeah. from Halloween. The first half where you get a little backstory is fine as its own little weird movie. Yeah. If it wasn't branded with a Halloween name on it, but. But then it shifts focus to Laurie Strode and her friends, and you realize that Rob Zombie hates teenagers. Because all those characters are so horribly written. Yeah. They're so shrill and awful. Is it is it more interesting if Michael Myers comes from an abusive father, or is it just more interesting if they oh, just... Oh, yeah. Here's a garage, the reference to the mechanic's uniform. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not more interesting if there's all this backstory. Yeah, I mean, isn't it more... You know, he's just, he's just a crazy guy. Is he yeah. a normal family, and yeah. one day just stabs... Well, again, it's 
It's a different type of movie. R Michael Myers could be, in one version of it, he could be a kid who grows up in an abusive, mm -hmm. drunken family that turns into a psychopath. This one, it's, it's, he's, he's a person, but he's pure evil. Yeah. And there's no soul. You know, I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking which is more interesting. This? Yeah. The non-Rob <laughs> Zombie? <laughs> I was I was asking to start a discussion, not to be belittled, Mike. The the, the answer is this one. Yeah. End of discussion. Because uh, you know, it's, uh, it's if the second half of the Rob Zombie one went in a completely different direction, then it would be uh, more acceptable as as its own thing. It's the fact that it's a direct remake of this one. This, this film by itself is, is perfect. Yes. It's fine. Anything outside of this, I'm fine with Michael Myers as a Freddy uh, Krueger type <laughs> comical villain just stabbing people for no reason, just for fun. Leave this one alone. Don't remake it, yeah. you know. Rob Zombie should have made Michael Myers part eight. Michael My they already did Michael Myers in space, didn't they? Or No, Michael Myers never went no, to Jason space. Jason went to space. Jason went to space, Leprechaun went to space, Hellraiser went to space. Everyone but the astronauts have gone to space. <laughs> did you know the moon landings were faked, Rich? I, Stanley I, Kubrick's I behind knew it, that. Right? Stanley Kubrick did it. Yeah. 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 So well, why why is it all of the horror movies go into space when they get really desperate? Th that that's exactly why, because they're desperate. I don't know why space actually. Like, what makes you think Jason should go to space? Well, Jason, they 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 ran out of ideas entirely yes, yes. by the end. Um, Michael Myers didn't quite, I, I think it, it's just such a simple concept, you can't really expand upon it too much. No, you have to add stupid shit like he's the, the pawn of a cult, but you have mm -hmm. to keep it grounded in somewhat of a reality. Yeah, Freddy and Jason, you could kind of go off the, off the tracks a little. Yeah, well, especially Freddy, because yeah. he's more uh, imaginative, that's more fantasy. And there's a dream dream element to it. Yeah, so. you have uh, the wizard master in part three shooting lightning bolts out of his fingers, and you can get away with that type of stuff. The only the only thing they could get away with is in Halloween Resurrection when they did the webcams, and it was broadcast on the internet. Oh, yes, back in uh, <laughs> 2003? Yes. 2003, when the internet was new, uh, they, there was a slew of horror films based around webcams. You're alive on the internet. Uh, and I remember fear.com? Yeah. And I remember you joking. Actually, you might have been because we saw Halloween 6 together, or Halloween Resurrection together. Yeah. And I think you joked about there should be a movie called murder.com. Yeah. And then a couple months later, fear.com trailer uh, showed up. Yeah. Ro Rob Zombie could have handled <clears throat> uh, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where it's all crazy hicks that are just yelling all the time. Like, that's yes. more appropriate. But. Classy, classic, like, tension, that's yeah. not his thing. He's or, more for blunt stupidity. What's the movie, is it House on the End? How, the Hills Have Eyes. The Hills it. Have Eyes, where, something where like, like that, uh, yeah. Uh, nuclear uh, uh, mutated rednecks, right? Is yes. That, isn't that the plot? Yeah. Yeah, the Halloween subtle subtlety is not Rob Zombie's uh, <laughs> strong point. Oh, here's here's a fun little little tidbit coming up. Uh, they just saw Michael Myers peeking out from behind the bushes. Yes. She goes up to look, and uh, when she turns around in the, her reverse, you see a little wisp of smoke come by, and that's actually from John Carpenter because he's standing right next to the camera, like chain smoking. <laughs> so you'll, you'll see it in a second here. That's, that's classic okay. John Carpenter. Okay. Yeah. There, there, oh, there it there. is. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Even I never do that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> John Carpenter's cameo. Yeah. <laughs> it's like completely, un it's very subtle, but... Uh, Is that just the only take they had? I, I think so. I, I, <laughs> Although, I guess it's subtle enough where I never noticed it until you pointed it out. Uh, yeah, so. I've never seen it. I never noticed it before either. I, yeah. That could be from anything, I guess, if you didn't know. Yeah. But he's standing there next to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> He's blowing smoke in the shot. It's good enough. Fuck if I get cancer. It's fine. <laughs> Where's my paycheck? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That's not how he sounds. He's a lovely man, right? <laughs> I, I, I love John Carpenter. He's a lovely man. He's who, a very technically minded director. Yeah. Did, did you know Rob, Rob Zombie called him to, to get his blessing on the yeah. remake? This is, this is Rob Zombie told the story himself. And uh, he called up John Carpenter. He's like, it's Rob Zombie. I'm remaking uh, Halloween. And John Carpenter said, who? <laughs> <laughs> and your last name's Zombie? <laughs> and he goes, no, Rob Zombie. You know, I, I'm in the band. Rob Zombie, White Zombie, right? Yeah. Is that it? Their band. And John Carpenter's like, I'm in a band too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm in the. But, but he's like, he's like, I'm remaking Halloween. I just want to get your blessing. And John Carpenter said, Okay, whatever. <laughs> he, he did yeah. not give a flying fuck. And is this the most ripped off movie ever made? When you look at just like the glut of slasher movies that came out, there's a great documentary called Going to Pieces about the rise and fall of the the 80s slasher movies, and it all comes from this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, the most successful one after this was Friday the 13th, which Sean Cunningham, the director of that, admitted that he just stole the formula and the style of this. Yeah. And his goal was to replicate its success, and it worked. Uh, and, and then after that, there's just a, an endless slew of, of shitty slasher movies. Well, pardon my ignorance, um, because I, can't, I, I, I kind of remember the first Friday the 13th. I, I, don't, I haven't seen it in a long time. It's boring. Jason is not in it. It's more of like a psycho story, like a drowned kid uh, and his mother's doing all the killing, right? Yeah, it's more of a mystery through most of the movie, a even though it's not a mystery psycho. you could guess. Um, but then it, it's revealed, yeah, it's Jason's mom. She's out for revenge because her son drowned in the lake. Um, and then, then how does that morph into the next one, an uh, eight-foot-tall Kane Hodder with the hockey mask on? Oh, God, it doesn't make any sense because then the, well, the end of the first one, they just wanted a cheap jump scare, even though it makes no sense. Jason just jumps out of the water at the end. And in he, the first one? In the first one. The, the main girl gets away, <laughs> she kills Pamela Voorhees, and she's lying out in the boat in the water. And then for no reason, the little Jason, the, the Jason that drowned in the lake 20-some years ago, jumps out of the water and grabs her. That's the end of the movie. Hmm. And then the second one, it's revealed that Jason, now he's a grown-up, now he's an adult man, has been living in the woods for the last 20 years? Where it's like, so you weren't dead, you didn't drown in the lake, so why did you just uh, hide from your mom in the woods for the past 20 years? Because he's a crazy man. It doesn't. Nothing about the, that series makes any sense in the initial setup of it. But, um, but you're talking about mainly the the style and the yeah, the like the killer's point of view, which you only see in Halloween during the opening sequence. But that was something that they they took, where you because they didn't want you to see who the killer was, so you just see their point of view through the whole thing. That the end with the final girl seeing all the bodies like falling out of you know closets and stuff. That's all directly taken from from Halloween. Well, all the all the cliches, you know, the virgin, nice girl, mm -hmm. she's got the slutty friends, they all die. The, the people that have sex, they die. That mm -hmm. was all inadvertently started by Halloween. But this, this movie, John Carpenter did not realize he was setting up any sort of cliches. It was just a movie he was making. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be a watershed film. Yeah. It may be the most ripped off movie ever. Yeah, yeah. You know what happens with a lot of watershed movies, though? They don't know they're making something great. They're just making a movie. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Of course. I mean, this was just a cheap, you know, producer came to him and said, we want to make a movie about babysitters being murdered. And it turned into this. And he also inadvertently created the most iconic horror music score ever. Mm-hmm. Classic, classic score that is, uh, you don't really hear people ripping off the score to this. I guess it's so, like, it'd be hard to. Yeah. Which is another reason I could see people watching this now and not finding it very interesting. They'll say, oh, it's just full of all these cliches, but they didn't exist at this time. Yeah, this is, is the movie the that started cliches. it. This movie started the cliches. Like, like Lethal Weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But here, she's not that good. She smokes a doobie. So she's not that innocent. This is when they go to uh, Michael Myers' sister's grave, and the grave has been ripped out of the ground. Oh. He really hated his sister. <laughs> <laughs> she must have stolen his toys. <laughs> Maybe she stole his Annabelle doll. He stabbed her with a butcher knife. We saw. 
<laughs> Did you miss that part? In the remake, this this uh, grave digger character is played by Sid Haig, which isn't distracting at all. Just cast a random nobody in that part. Yeah. Rob Zombie. Don't cast all your horror convention friends in every role. Speaking of horror conventions, John Carpenter does conventions. He does. Which is bizarre. He, I, yeah, he's so laid back and like he doesn't care about anything anymore. It seems like he wouldn't even bother. But I saw him when we were at uh, uh, Toronto Fan Expo. Yeah. I went to his panel. And it was great. He told a great story. Someone asked what his thoughts were on the remakes. And uh, he said he loves when his movies get remade because he just puts out his hand and a check floats down into it. <laughs> How old is he now? Not as old as he looks. I know that. Really? Yeah. He was, I think he was 30 when he made this movie, which I always think of this as being his first movie, even though it's not. He did Dark Star and Assault on Precinct 13 before this, but I think he was 30 when he made this. Okay. Not as old as I thought. I'm not the biggest John Carpenter fan, I'll be honest with you. I know you're not. Uh, I, I think... I watched Assault on Precinct 13 and uh, Escape from New York. Not a fan of either. I, I think Escape from New York is overrated. Yeah. Oh, I I'll love that movie. I'll agree with you on that. 100%. But, but I, I absolutely adore Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Oh, Big Trouble I, in Little China is great. That. Oh, you've never seen that? Oh, it's great. They Live is great. No, John Carpenter had, I think I had quite a run. I haven't seen the good John Carpenter films then. Well, a lot of people would say Escape from New York is the good one. I think it is. I love that movie. It's not a good action movie. That's the thing. People talk about it as being an action movie, but there's so little action, and what action there is is, is awkward and clunky. I love how all, all these brown leaves are falling from green trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so distracting to me now, Mike. Why did you point this out? <laughs> my, brain, my brain used to be ignorant. I, I can suspend my disbelief for this. So the, the, the Michael Myers house uh, was actually moved a couple decades ago, and it is frame right of this hardware store now in Pasadena. And it is a... It's a chiropractor's office. They move the house. They mo literally move the entire house. It was uh, this block of houses that are actually right behind this hardware store. They were all being tore down because they were all old and yeah. abandoned. And there was one house standing and it was the Michael Myers house. And some guy that had some money from the area, he wanted to buy it. He had no idea it was used in Halloween. Really? He bought it because he thought uh, he wanted to preserve its historical significance. It was built in like the late 1800s. Um, and they said, okay, you can have this house, but you have to move it within a week or we're going to demolish it. So he physically he got hired somebody to move the house to the end of the block, which is an area he did not have permission to move it to. He didn't own that property yet. He just moved it there. <laughs> and then he bought the property later. That is fascinating. He didn't even know it was the Halloween house? Yeah, no, he found that out later. By the way, Michael Myers just drove back behind Donald Pleasance in the background. Did he you did. notice that? He did. He's always watching. The ironic part, Rich, is he threw his back out when he moved the house. <laughs> <laughs> Chiropractor joke. Come on. <laughs> Come on, who's with me? <laughs> No patented Rich Evans laugh? That? That, was, that was pretty pretty damn Did you not make the chiropractor connection at first? I didn't. Okay. Because I, I forgot that aspect of it. Okay. Well, that's the problem. But yeah, now that house sits awkwardly at the end of the block. It's, it's in a really weird position. It's behind like a diner. And then you also visited the Freddy Krueger house, right? Yes. The Michael Myers house is in Pasadena. Uh, the houses they're driving to here to babysit are in uh, L.A. And they are, a, that, that whole street that the climax of this movie takes place on is a block off of Sunset Boulevard. It looks completely out of place for the rest of that area. And the block or two south of that is the Freddy Krueger house. Right in the same little area, both right off of Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, this is it right here. Right, right in the heart of Hollywood. And that's why they filmed there. Yeah. 
and there were nice green trees to make it look like the Midwest. <laughs> I'm so sorry that the magic has been ruined for you. <laughs> this is not actually filmed in Haddonfield, Illinois. There is no Haddonfield, I'd, Illinois. I'd be okay if they just said it took place in California. Yeah? Yeah. No, I like that. That's You think of Halloween, trick-or-treating, you think of the Midwest. You don't think of anybody celebrating any holidays in California. Yeah, but now everything's going to be just so weirdly distracting with leaves and <laughs> fucking fucking outdoor schools. I, I think it's charming. The, le right. the leaves especially. I think that's neat. All right. When Hollywood wants to, to have a good holiday-themed movie, they turn to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Because there is no seasons in California. Exactly. Southern California. There's no snow around Christmas time. And there's no fall in the fall. Yep. It's just a big haze of smog. <laughs> <laughs> and the pleasant smell of urine in the air. From <laughs> all the homeless bums. And the beauty of spray paint and graffiti. <laughs> and people dressed up as Wolverine and Spider-Man. Yeah. Begging for money. <laughs> So this is the house before the painting. Yes, they filmed all this stuff, and then for the opening scene, uh, everyone on the crew chipped in and, and cleaned up the house. This is, I have a problem with this aspect of the movie. Now, we've had Donald Pleasance, Dr. Loomis, setting everything up. He has a great speech in this scene about looking into Michael Myers' eyes and just seeing blackness. After that, he has nothing to do for the rest of the movie. He's literally standing next to a bush for the next 45 minutes. Yep. It's a little awkward. And so this is this is not a set. No, this is what the house looked like. Literal, uh, worn down, uh, dilapidated house. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to watch a movie that has real things in it. <laughs> and holds on shots. This whole movie is long, uh, gliding uh, two shots. Oh, this is where they discover that Michael Myers ate a dog. That's what, they're, that's what they're looking at right there. Don't they find like, uh, like a, a, a pot of beans or something on the stove? I don't remember. In the that. kitchen? I don't think so. I think they did. Damn it! I, I don't recall this. They're like he was eating beans. Are you sure you're not thinking of a sequel? Mm. I have no memory of this. Why would you eat beans if you have dog? I uh, I don't remember this dog. I I, I think you're, you're thinking of another movie. No. no he looks down and he says he must what happened to that dog are you oh thinking, he must have got hungry are you thinking of a different Dean Cundy movie Jack and Jill it's possible yeah. are, you th are you thinking of the Watchmen didn't Rorschach eat raw beans no I, I saw the Watchmen once and I don't remember a thing about it <laughs> please don't compare that hack flop to John Carpenter's classic Halloween <laughs> Rorschach <laughs> give me a break hey Rorschach ended up playing Freddy so there's a loose connection there. there's a loose connection there yeah, remember the Nightmare on Elm Street remake? What a hit. <laughs> I guess that's the one thing I'll say for the Rob Zombie remake. Like, people still talk about that movie and remember it. The Friday the 13th remake, I didn't think it was that bad because it was just another shitty Friday the 13th movie. And the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, like, those are completely forgotten. The Rob Zombie movie, most people talk about it because they hate it, but it is still brought up in discussions. Nobody <sighs> cares about the other remakes. Yeah, yeah. I like Malcolm McDowell. He's a good replacement for Donald uh, Pleasance. Oh, was he in that? <laughs> in the Halloween? Yeah, he played the Donald Pleasance role. Jeez, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Pleasance is a class act. Yes. I uh, originally tried to get uh, Peter Cushing or Christopher Lee for this role, and they both turned it down. Peter Cushing? Yeah. Wow. Well, he was, it was, you know, as a connection to the Hammer horror films. Yeah, yeah. He was kind of going for that, but neither of them wanted to do it. Uh, I guess Christopher Lee said he re regrets it now. But thank God they ended up with Donald Pleasance, because he was very loyal to the series. And he made the sequels more entertaining than they should be by just being batshit crazy. Yeah. And then they preserved his, his legacy and his memory in Halloween 6. Yes. When they released an unfinished film and dedicated <laughs> it to him. In memory of. Yeah, this is his great speech about there's nothing left of a human being inside of Michael Myers. Now, at some point he says that Michael Myers was cooking beans. 
I swear to God, <laughs> this happened. He's not a human being anymore. If you look into his eyes, you see blackness. Do you smell beans? <laughs> <laughs> he must have been eating beans. They show food, and they're like, he survived on this. I, I don't think... I, you have to be thinking of one of the sequels. You're probably thinking of the one with Busta Rhymes. No, I think it might have been four. Quickly, find out what grocery stores have sold beans in the last 24 hours. <laughs> catch them, they catch them on a security camera. <laughs> <laughs> Walking around with his mask on. Yeah, this is like before everywhere had security cameras, so he broke into the hardware store, and that's where he got his famous mask. So, well, let's talk about the mask, because there are oh, probably... Yes. There's probably two people who don't know about the mask. <laughs> yeah, the mask is important uh, because it is a uh, William Shatner Star Trek mask mm -hmm. that they painted white. Yeah. Was the hair part of the mask or did the, they add The hair that? was part of the mask. They, they cut the eye holes bigger, they painted it white, and they may have done some other minor cosmetic things to it. But you two might know better than I would. Has William Shatner ever commented on that? I'm sure William Shatner wants to be remembered as a serial killer. Well, mask. I, no, I'm thinking like no, thinking of his personality. Like if he ever wanted to get like money out of him or some sort of something from that association. I want to say he has. He yeah. has talked about that, didn't he? Talk. We we saw him at live. Yeah, I don't and remember I, him talking about that. I thought he mentioned that. Interesting. I I, I he was too busy talking about how he invented NASA. No, how how. <laughs> He personally inspired man to go to the moon. <laughs> I hear he's appearing in Star Trek Three. Oh no, really? Yes, there. Uh... Does anybody care about that movie? <laughs> no, I, it's it's now officially pathetic. <laughs> They're dredging up w William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy's coming back too. Wait, this is creepy. Oh yeah, this is a creepy shot. By the way, that's producer Deborah Hill. Yes. Standing there. Yeah, I, I've heard that. That. Was, that was like the last shot they ever filmed for the movie. And she's like five foot tall. Yeah, but she's so far away, they put the mask on her and they're like, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's five or so different people that play Michael Myers mm -hmm. throughout this movie. The main one yeah. is Nick Castle, who went on to direct such hits as the Dennis the Menace movie, starring Walter Matthau, um, and Major Pain, starring Damon Wayans. So the guy who was Michael Myers went on to direct films? Yes. Well, he was, uh, he's only in this movie because he's, he was like USC pals with John Carpenter. So he was a filmmaker in his own right. He did also do The Last Starfighter. So he did one quality movie. And he co-wrote uh, Escape from New York. Yeah. What, 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 this made what, 78 or... 77? Yeah, right in that era. I think 77 came out in 78. It's interesting to me that a uh, William Shatner Halloween mask would have been around then. <laughs> that, was, that was before Star Trek got revived with the motion picture. That's true. Well, they they bought the cheapest mask they could. It was $2. <laughs> yeah, that was it. They, they bought... Yeah, it was $2. They bought that, and they bought, like, a clown mask, and then they tried to decide which one they wanted to use. Yeah. They messed the hair up and uh, adjusted the eye holes a yeah. little. Yeah, to, they cut uh, them a little bigger. Yeah. Oh, here he kills another dog. Michael Myers hates dogs. Well, here he's got to kill it to keep it quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the... F oh, he kills her, but we don't see it on screen, right? No, they, we see it. They find her body later, no? No, we see it. Dead dog. Dead dog number two. Now he's going to go cook some more beans. Now, how did they get this shot? Probably the, trank the dog. You think so? Did you know anything about that shot? I, I don't. So it, re it looks like the, uh, an actual German shepherd is They might have just limp. picked up the dog and shot it in slow motion. Because I'm assuming if you pick up a dog, his legs will kind of start yeah, to droop maybe, down. So. Maybe. And here we have The Thing on TV, which, of course, John Carpenter went on to remake. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. Okay. The Thing is pretty great. Yeah, that's interesting. I guess yeah, this would have been before that. I in my in my earlier viewings of this, which the you know, first time I saw this is I think after the thing came out. I probably didn't make that connection that this is actually oh, before sure. the thing. Yeah, I probably saw this originally and just saw that as a reference to another movie he did. Which sure, I'm nope. sure he remade the thing because he's a fan of the yeah, film. Yeah, he likes the original film. So although the original film is laughable, 
I've never seen the original. John Carpenter's The Thing is one of the, the small handful of movies people always bring up when they try to bring up good remakes. Yes. They bring up that and The Fly. Well, the original is like an embarrassingly bad like uh, 50s movie. It's a Howard Hawks movie. He's a, he's a vegetable monster in the original <laughs> thing, isn't he? It's, it's like a big metaphor for uh, communism. Sure, but I mean, The, the Thing yeah. is like a vegetable man, if I remember right. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I just remember it's. He's like, made out of plant material. Yeah, it's real heavy-handed, like uh, body snatchers. You yeah, know, those uh, red scare kind of movies. I've actually I've seen the original and I haven't seen the remake. You never seen I've John seen, Carpenter's? The no, thing? I haven't. Holy shit, dude! That's one of the best movies ever. Oh sure. That's another example of Dean Cundey's brilliant uh, uh, lighting. He kept the monster in the dark. It's great practical effects in that movie, but so much of it is in shadow, which makes it way more believable. Now, did you see the remake remake of the thing? I did. It's technically a prequel, even though it's the exact same movie, but it's supposed to be setting up uh, what happens uh, at the beginning of John Carpenter's The Thing. But yeah, I guess they shot that movie with it all practical effects, and then someone higher up said, these look corny, replace them with CG. So they went through the movie and replaced all these amazing practical effects with CG, which is just embarrassing. I don't know the details, but I've heard the people that did the original practical effects for that, they're making their own movie. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I forget what it's called, is unfortunately. Is it called The Thing? <laughs> Are they going to make another thing? I don't, I don't know if I should look up the title it's before the commentary things. track is over. But... <laughs> it's called Things. It's a remake of Things from Canada. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Now, can I ask a question here, Jay? Yes. Um, why, what is the logic of Michael Myers killing Laurie Strode's friends? Uh, there is no logic. He's evil. He's just killing people. But, that are in, in his hood. But it, why, why are they all, why, how does she all happen to know them all? Is, is he just killing random people? Like, well, he's been stalking them. He saw them earlier. He's been when stalking they're walking her. Home from school. Yeah, so he, he stalked her. He saw them all walking down the sidewalk. Okay, okay. So he's just sort of been following them all around. Oh, that's a great reflection shot. Yeah. Now remind me, what's his motivation for stalking Laurie in the first place? When this movie was made, he had none. In part two, they introduced the idea that uh, Laurie Strode is Michael Myers' sister. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, that, that was not meant to be the case in this first movie. John Carpenter threw that in the sequel because he's like, there's no more story. What else do I do? I'll throw this in there. <laughs> he, he really didn't want to do part two. He only wrote it. He didn't direct yeah. it. But I think the only reason he did it is so he could make another movie. I think it was like a two-picture deal where if he did that, he could do The Fog, I think. Which The Fog is great, too. Interesting. Yeah. And then the third movie, if we want to talk about the third movie... That's where he said, we got to get rid of this Michael Myers character. <laughs> Let's turn the Halloween series into an anthology series, which I think is a great idea. Every mo every year, you have a new movie, completely unrelated, that's comes just out, about the comes season out of Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, of, yeah it's the season of Halloween. But I think people could not get away from the Michael Myers character, which is unfortunate, because he gets boring after that. He's just a, 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 a pure evil killer, and that's it. Weren't you telling me that you thought hate for Halloween 3 was unwarranted too, but it's a, it's a good movie, or was that somebody Halloween else? Halloween 3 is insane and wonderful. It is such a weird movie. You haven't seen it, Rich? Uh, well, yeah, but it's been so long. Okay. I don't remember. I just remember the masks would turn kids' heads into bugs. Yes, the plot of the movie is uh, this crazy Irish man that runs a, uh, a factory that produces Halloween masks steals a chunk of Stonehenge <laughs> and chips off pieces of it and puts it in a little disc on the inside of the masks he makes. Yeah. And when a subliminal signal comes out over the TV while you're wearing the mask, it sets off something in the Stonehenge chip that turns your head into bugs. And he wants to do that because he hates children. <laughs> and that's the plot of the movie. It is so amazing. Oh, and he has a minion of robots. All of his, all the people that work at his factory are robots. Yeah, and there's like a couple great. that are investigating it. They're like news reporters or something. It's like. no, it's it's uh, Tom Atkins, um, and some woman that he just meets that's trying to investigate why her 
father died. And so she has a connection to it because her father died because of something the crazy Irish man did. And Tom Atkins get, gets involved just because he wants to bang her. Oh. <laughs> That's the movie. D- did John Carpenter make three? He uh, can't, helped come up with the premise. He produced it and he did the score. Okay. And then Alan Howarth did the score. And it really, I didn't see it until a couple of years ago. And it was like discovering a new John Carpenter movie because the same score, same sort of tone. Uh, Dean Cundy did the cinematography for that too. So it's it's definitely worth checking out if, if people haven't seen it because Michael Myers isn't in it. Just watch it as a standalone horror movie and it's wonderful. Two more days till Halloween. And you'll have that song stuck in your head for the Silver rest of the month. Silver Shamrock. <laughs> John Carpenter is also apparently a talented musician. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say talented. He makes, I actually found this out with uh, uh, some of the the behind the scenes stuff on They Live. He, maybe not the case with this movie, but with some of his movies, he did the score like improvisational, where he just played the movie and played music along with it, which is why some of it's very repetitive. Mm but yeah, it wasn't like a, a planned out thing. Like he didn't shoot sequences with the intention of having the score go a certain way. Uh, and I thought that was interesting. It's like like the song, not the score, but like the song for Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, that's him. It yeah. was him. That's him singing. Oh, I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. It's him. Uh, I think Tommy Lee Wallace, who directed part three and is Nancy Loomis here's husband, or was at the time. And Nick Castle, who plays... Michael Myers in this. The three of them in a band together. They were like a band when they went to USC together, and so they occasionally would do other things. Well, I take it back. John Carpenter <laughs> is a talented I music. think they actually, it was called the Coupe de Villes. That was the name of their band. And I think they're actually referenced on the radio in this movie at one point. Like you hear a radio person say, our last song was the Coupe de Villes. All this trivia. Where are their parents on Halloween night? Uh, I guess they're out partying. These are all babysitters. That was the original title of the movie. It was the babysitter killer mm-hmm. or something. Ba- or babysitter yeah. massacre. I want to say babysitter, babysitter murders. Babysitter murders sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Have you not even considered that they would be at a Halloween party, Mike? That, I think that's the assumption is that it's they're out at a Halloween party. Babysitter murders. Yeah. But the young kids want to go on trick or treat. They're going to go trick or treat. selfish of parents to go to a Halloween party. <laughs> Yeah, Babysitter Murders, and then they changed the title to Halloween. Which, it's very fortunate that a a movie about Halloween that takes place on Halloween, that's called Halloween, turned out to be a good movie. Because otherwise, this shitty movie would be associated with the season forever. You know who saved this movie from obscurity? Who's that? Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert? Just by what, giving it a good review? When it came out, it was like universally panned by everyone oh. and uh and movies releases were a little slower back then mm-hmm. um this is one of the things they cover in that documentary um and everyone's like this is trash it's trash it's uh it's you know stupid and then john carper's like whatever i'll move on to my next project yeah and then when ebert saw it he's like you know this is really good there's actually some crap there's after it's, it, this is really a really well-made movie and he gave it a good review and then it sort of like revived it and then it oh, came okay. back to life yeah i know it was like a slow build before it right. made all the monies but right. I, I didn't know that yeah this is creepy too and she gets in the car and she sees breath on the windshield did you just say all the monies she made all the monies this movie was the most financially successful independent film for a few decades i think blair witch project finally beat it out Technically, the most Mad Max. Technically, <laughs> uh, the most successful independent film is The Empire Strikes Back. Wow. On a technical level, no, I, a, I think that is an independent film. It's not studio produced. Okay. Studio released, but well, this was this was uh, from a a cost to profit ratio of how much this movie cost to make, which was around three hundred thousand dollars, to how much it made. Oh look, there's Leslie Nielsen. I I thought I thought Mad Max had that crown up until Blair Witch came out. No. Okay. <laughs> well, there's a Howard the Duck comic, Rich. Yeah. This is weird that the shot of them watching TV is handheld. It's not like the the Panaglide shot. It's like actual handheld. It sort of sticks out with everything else in the movie. The Panaglide guy was uh, was not there that day. <laughs> They ran out of money. 
Oh, Paul Rudd, you so crazy. He's trying to be a ninja. <laughs> He's trying to scare his little sister. That's not his sister. That's not? No. Oh, the two kids come together. Yeah, they were babysitting they... at separate houses. Is Tommy wearing a Luke Skywalker outfit? I would highly doubt it. I think he's wearing a ninja outfit. Oh, that's right. He was trying to be a ninja. Yeah, that's, he's trying to be stealth here. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Time frame, though, is right for that to be a Luke Skywalker outfit. That's true. Oh, ast it's actually an astronaut uniform. Oh. So they're seeing Michael Myers carry a dead... dead that's... Uh, who is that? Annie? That's Annie, yeah. Okay. So he sees that. So I guess you do get a little glimpse of him starting to set up the bodies that uh, that Laurie Strode finds at the end of the movie. Yeah, he's he's actually actively working on it. <laughs> That's, he's going to the house. He's putting it in the closet or wherever she falls out of. He should have really carried the body around the backside of the house. Yeah, it's be a little more inconspicuous, I would think. But uh, Michael Myers is uh, is is not one for subtlety. He just no. kind of walks around in broad daylight with a monster mask on. Yeah. yeah so it's 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 very advantageous that he just so happens to come home right around Halloween. Yeah. Otherwise, he would look very suspicious. He planned that out, Jay. I don't know if he planned anything out. He's pure evil. He doesn't plan these things. He just is driven by uh, pure will. Oh, there's uh, uh, Donald Pleasance just standing by a plant some more. He's gonna fuck with some kids. This is this is what he does for the middle of the movie. Mm -hmm. He looks like a pervert. <laughs> but you know, he's just trying to protect them. Yeah. He does. He thinks Michael Myers could be hanging out in this house, even though he's been hanging out there for hours, and he knows that Michael Myers is not there. Well, he's he just might. gonna stand in one spot in hopes that Michael Myers shows up. It's a perfectly valid strategy. What else, what the fuck else is he gonna do? Wander around the streets and I'd, hope I'd, he finds him? I think you could have rewritten the story where he wasn't there, he didn't get to Haddonfield yet, something where you don't just have to have him stand there for the entire middle chunk of the movie. He needs a Michael Myers detector. Oh, sure, some sort of device, mm -hmm. like a... They really should have written that in. Yeah. Like, like a scientific device. Like a, tel a telepathic uh, device that taps into his brain waves. Yeah. And, and Donald Pleasance would wear, like, the thing that uh, uh, Louis Tully wore on top of his head in <laughs> Ghostbusters and walk around. <laughs> I think that just would have made the movie perfect. That would have been great if he's wearing that in, like, parts four and five where he's really overacting and he seems like more of a crazy person than Michael Myers. Yeah, and he's wearing yeah. this uh, colander on his head. Yeah. I can tap into his brain waves. <laughs> Holding an insanometer in his hand that kind of like beeps when he points at the general direction of Michael Myers. Yeah. H2O, it's not a great movie. Like the slasher elements are kind of bland, but the movie works as, as like a, like Laurie Strode confronting, literally and figuratively that much. confronting yeah. her demons and facing off against Michael Myers. She chops his head off at the end. It's great. And then the next movie, she's in an insane asylum. And Michael Myers shows up, and she falls off the roof of the building. And that's the end of her story. <laughs> I remember that. No. <laughs> Those sequels are so bad. At least there's funny bad stuff in most of the, uh, the Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. Well, M Nightmare on Elm Street movies are straight up comedies. After yeah, they um, get more more silly, but they're always two? imaginative. They're more creative. That's yeah. why I always liked them as a kid more than these other series. Here's the guy with the glasses that uh, go on top of the ghost. That's a creepy image. Yes, that's Bob. Bob. That's his name. Bob. Close the door! <laughs> he just leaves the door open. What Bob, the fuck, you fuck, man? So when... Was this Linda? Bob and Linda? Yeah. When Linda is and Bob <laughs> are heading up upstairs to the bedroom, Linda trips on the dolly track. Oh, I think I recall this, yeah. I think it's when they leave this room. It might not be this scene. I don't remember, but... Oh, wacky dolly track. <laughs> it's 
So where's the Halloween franchise today, Jay? Michael Myers, or not Michael Myers, um, Rob Zombie. Rob Zombie had a big hit with the first one. And he made a second one. He made a second one and everyone hated it. Even though I think it's kind of interesting. Not a good movie, but it's interesting. Um, I did not see the second one. I don't think anybody saw the second one. What, what did he do with the second one? The second one is so fucked up. It's about Laurie Strode. She has survived this movie, the first movie. Yeah. But it's like about like dealing with the fact that your brother is a serial killer. Um, and she's like completely fucked up in the head. She turns into like this weird punk rock chick. And just all the people that survived the first movie, like how they're dealing with it. Like it's very really? kind of emotional in a weird way. Uh, but then Michael Myers starts seeing his dead mom and a white horse. Uh, he has these weird visions. It's very surreal and stupid. Um, and what else happens in it? And then he just kills people. I think he kills a dog in that one, too. Am, am I a crazy man for thinking a, a, an interesting sequel to a horror movie would just be people dealing with the fallout? Yeah, and that's, that's what's interesting in the second one. But it gets bogged down with a bunch of like bad attempts at surrealism and annoying characters. But the idea is there. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but then that one flopped. So I don't know. I think the series is just sort of in limbo now. There was talk of doing a third one, but I think that's dead. Well, I'm assuming it'll just be another reboot. A re-reboot. Yeah. There, there can't be new ideas anymore. Nope. That's not entirely true. There are some new ideas out there in the theaters. Like Saw 7? They don't make Saw movies anymore, Rich Evans, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> They've made a Saw movie since 2008. Yeah, the Saw series is now old. Yeah, that's really old. <laughs> that's crazy age. that that's old already. They're going to reboot that. When are they going to reboot Saw? Nope. Haunting, hauntings are all the rage now, Jay. That's the big thing, yeah. Torture, uh, torture porn uh, horror stuff is no longer a thing. Yeah. Which is cool, because I like haunting movies. <laughs> it was Slasher Revival, 97 on. Then yes, it was, all the post-screen movies. Then it was Torture, and now it's uh, it's Ghosts. And you. or found footage. Yeah, yeah. Because those you are got cheap your, to make. Uh, you got your Watershed movies, uh, Scream yeah. and, and Saw. Yes. And then uh, Blair Witch slash Paranormal Activity. Yeah. Well, that's what's crazy is Blair Witch was a huge hit, and I thought there was going to be a ton of found footage movies right after that, and there weren't until Paranormal Activity, and that was huge, and now there's a bunch as a result of that movie being successful. What is, where, does, where does Human Centipede fit in with that? Would you consider that torture porn, or is that more of a, a mutilation kind of thing? That's, this falls on that same I category. guess it would fall under torture porn. Uh, it was more of an odd curiosity for people, I think. Yeah, that, it doesn't necessarily mean that every movie conforms to whatever the current genre sure, craze is. Sure. But. Especially when it comes to independent horror films. There's actually been a lot of really interesting ones in the last few years. But as far as the big mainstream horror ones, yeah, ghost movies, haunting movies, that's, and, that's and found footage. The slasher serial killer is now no longer popular. No. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Scream revived that, and all the movies that came out in the wake of that were just generic slasher movies, even though Scream was sort of dissecting that entire idea and all the cliches of it. Everything that followed it was just a generic slasher movie. But nobody understood that. <laughs> so here's what started the... The, the, the trope smoking of, craze? The smoking craze. Look, you can see the smoke in this shot, too. Jay, I think that's because they're smoking on camera. Oh... Oh, no, it started the cliche of the uh, the couple having sex and then, then getting killed. These youngins. Does it mean how those cigarettes look really big? <laughs> I think they're just really tiny. Oh my god, that cat picture. <laughs> that was amazing. That's what passed for art back then. This is something I'll give the remake. Um... In, in this version, Michael Myers comes to the door uh, where PJ Souls is laying, and he's wearing the ghost costume. The ghost costume is not set up in this. Like, you don't see him putting it on like, oh, I'm going to scare my girlfriend. Michael Myers just shows up in the ghost costume. In the remake, they, they show that the Bob character puts on the costume first. Yeah. 
So it's a little weird in this version. Yeah. Well, it's nice that the remake got something right. <laughs> Most of the shots in the remake were in focus, too, so. That's true. Here we have the famous head tilt kill. Yeah. Stabs him, even though this, I don't think, is physically possible to pin him to a wall with a tiny knife that wouldn't even go all the way through him, but it works visually. And there you have That's the most exciting kill in this movie. And it's like nothing. Yeah, the, the knife would just pop right out of the wall. <clears throat> well, it's not even a wall. It's their, like, cabinet. It's like a cabinet door, yeah. The whole thing would just collapse. But look at that lighting. Oh, yeah, this looks great. The blue lighting and Michael Myers tilting Is that a light in shot on the top of the frame there? I don't think. Maybe? No, that couldn't be. Anything is possible. Yeah, so now he just shows up with this ghost costume. Yeah, well, why would Michael Myers want to, to scare someone? <laughs> I mean... Because he's evil. <laughs> the visual is, is creepy, you know. Well, he, he gets close to her without her running away. All right. All right. It's a little clunky. It, it is comical in the remake, though, because the guy playing Michael Myers is, like, nine feet tall. So he's standing there wearing this costume, and she's like, Bob, is that you? And he's, and he's comically tall. It's clearly not your boyfriend. I, I like how he puts the glasses on top of the ghost costume. Yeah, to, well, that's so she thinks that it's him. Yeah, to simulate that it's Bob. It's, very, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really scary, actually. You should wear that costume for the rest of the movie. The ghost costume. That'd be great. <laughs> Even the nudity in this is really tame. Like you could cut out a few little things in this thing in this movie and it would be like a PG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no blood or gore. So many phone calls in this movie, too. Everybody's just constantly on the phone. It's very observant of you, Jack. I guess that's, I guess that's the way people communicated back then. Yeah, that was Are before. you saying this movie is basically death list? <laughs> <laughs> so he had his mask on and a blanket over his mask and someone's prescription glasses on over that. Yes. Yes. And he still got around all right. <laughs> well, you don't you don't know how many things he stumbled on his way up to the bedroom. <laughs> That's a deleted scene. He could have been scene. like just tripping like, all like over the place. <laughs> and then he's like, get to the door. He's like, okay, now I'm gonna be really cool when I open this door. <laughs> well, that was that was the third door he tried. Like the first one, he opened the door slowly, and it it was the bathroom. <laughs> Is that a person at the end? Okay. Oh, that's he right. He stumbled forward. He tried to stab the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make this into a short film. <laughs> yeah, I always wonder, because then at the end of this movie is the big reveal when Laurie Strode goes across the street and she sees her friend, like one's laying in the bed, one's hiding in the closet that falls out at her, all her dead friends. Like Michael Myers had to set all that stuff up. Like I want to see those scenes of him awkwardly shoving someone into a, into a closet. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back at uh, Dr. Loomis and the plant. Or make a movie where a killer goes to the trouble of setting all that up, but then his victim runs into like the other house. <laughs> and it was all for nothing. Damn it. Damn. Still by that bush. <laughs> What is he waiting for? Michael Myers. He's just to show waiting, uh, hoping that Michael Myers shows up, and he just now noticed the car that's been parked across the street this entire time. So now he's just going to wander around and hope that he finds Michael Myers. This is the clunkiest part of the movie. Yeah. Why aren't there cops with him? 
There, there was a, a there's one sheriff cop. There, there's yeah, it's a small town, Rich. All right, one sheriff. There's, there's Annie Brackett's dad is wa uh, driving around, and that's all that happens. But yeah, he just noticed that car. Damn it. He's around here somewhere. Yeah, they, they come back to him in a little while, and he's literally just walking down the middle of the street, looking around. You know, he's doing something, Jay. <laughs> now he is! Before, he was just fucking with little kids. Speaking of looking around, I think this is the, the, the long looking around segment. Oh, look at this. The doorknob is on one side, and then when it cuts to the exterior, it's on the other side. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> oh, was that a boom mic shadow I saw? No, that's, no, tree that's a tree. Yeah. Stop looking for flaws in John Carpenter's classic film Halloween. <laughs> By the way, Rich, this is California, not the Midwest. <laughs> I knew that when I was eight. <laughs> I'm not a horror movie guy. I've seen this movie approximately once. Oh my god, really? Yeah. This is one of those movies that's so iconic where you don't have to see it to know basically what happens in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this whole segment is great. This is what makes the movie here. It's so drawn out. This is just her walking around. She knows something's up. She doesn't know what's up, but we do. And that's where the tension comes from. We know Michael Myers is killing people mm -hmm. with a giant butcher knife. So that's where we fucked up when we made The Recovered. We joked that the movie should be called Looking Around because we had so many scenes of just our main character walking around. And it works here because the audience knows what's happening and the character doesn't. And that's what builds tension. In our movie, the audience didn't know what was happening and the character didn't know what was happening. Neither so, did we. And neither did we, so it kind of falls flat. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying you have to convey information to your audience? Yes. Oh. It's very important. Time to remake Space Cup. <laughs> oh, no. Who said that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> There's this tiny voice coming from somewhere. <laughs> Rich, we have to start from uh, back to the drawing board with Space Cup. <laughs> Are you oh, ready? No. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's, let's go for it. And let's, action. Space cop, more like space flop. That was clever. Did you just come up I with that? I just came up with that. Space cop's gonna be remade before it comes out. <laughs> the reboot's already in the works. It's gonna be so terrible. People have no idea how terrible space cop's gonna be. All right. Everyone's anticipating this movie. John Carpenter's gonna remake space cop. Oh man. And I'm starring in space cop, but I'm just ashamed. <laughs> I'm, I'm so ashamed. It is one of the more embarrassing things you've done. It in is. Your life. And I've done a lot of embarrassing things. Wait, Lori Strode slowly walking through a door. Yes. She's made her way into the house. Do you remember hanging potted plants? Do they still have those? Yes. They do, but they're not in that, uh, that like, cloth, ropey material. Right. Now that's... they're just, like, plastic. Oh, well, that's, that's just a shame. It's not some sort of weird macro. Wait, that thing. guy was stabbed against the wall there. Oh, Michael Myers. Michael um, Myers has now placed everybody hidden throughout the house in hopes that Laurie Strode would come over there and discover them. Oh, we missed the tripping on the dolly shot. Oh, well. That happened a little while ago. Yeah. Look at this lighting. This is great. It is. It's it so is. moody. This whole, yeah, this, there's so Subtle much atmosphere moody. in this film. Mm -hmm. Now, does she trip over the dolly and say, oh, I tripped over the dolly, and they just keep it in? Is that, is that, that what that's happens? That's in the movie, yeah. These are not outtakes. These are actual scenes. <laughs> well, I don't think she verbally says I tripped over the dolly, but... <laughs> Dun, dun, yeah. dun. I'm just big visualizing the score. Audio yeah, I think this is the slower. The everybody knows, of course, the famous Halloween theme, but the, the slower, uh, more atmospheric uh, piece of music that plays throughout the movie, I like that a lot, too. Is that just like one note on the, the piano? Like, no, dun. that's when it gets more tense, that happens. Okay, okay. Dun, I, I can't dun, remember dun. what the score sounds like here. Yeah, no, it's, it's haunting and great. 
I remember going to haunted houses. I don't know what. There's like those three notes. <laughs> it's like Jaws. Not Jaws. Well, it's like the, not 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 the main Jaws, but that was Star Wars that you just did. Do 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 do. You can't you can't you can't sing that. That's copywritten. By who? The fuck do you mean by who? The, the, John and Williams? Disney's in public domain. No, it's not in it's public. It's in public domain at this point. It, it now copyright. takes 189 years for something to become public domain. <laughs> Thank you, Disney. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Mickey you, Mouse. Steamboat Willie. <laughs> 189 years, is that what you said? It's, it's 79 far. years after the person's dead. Yeah. Or after their last living relative is dead. So basically, oh my 189 God. years... See, we didn't get to see Michael Myers awkwardly lug that tombstone into the house and set it up on the bed. I want to see all those scenes. Just dragging it. Yeah, just dragging it down so the wait, sidewalk. Th this is the the obviously the headstone of his sister yes. that he murdered. Yes. Um, but then and then they show the grave. Mm -hmm. Dude, but the grave is like a child size grave. You don't really see, you just see the. Yeah, the so you see him standing next to it, and it's like you don't see the grave. You, you just see, see what the was dug, dug out, out where the, the headstone. tombstone. Was. Oh, that's the tombstone went there. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, they, they weren't. They didn't try to fit a person into that. I thought they were. They were. Oh my god. That's sort of a comical face. On it it is. A, uh, oh, this is a great shot coming up where Michael Myers slowly. They have like a tiny dimmer light on him, and he slowly comes in from the darkness. Yeah, these wonderful blue shafts of light, and then. Oh no, here he comes. There he yeah. is. Yeah. But yeah, the main Halloween theme. I remember going to haunted houses as a little kid. And every haunted house, when you're waiting in line, they had that same like Halloween compilation mixtape of spooky music. And so I'd always hear that song long before... I was way too little to see the movie, so I didn't know what it was from. And then when I finally saw this movie, I was like, that's the haunted house music. Can I share a Halloween memory as a child? Absolutely. In in my neighborhood, there was a house, and the guy would uh, he he had a perfect Michael Myers costume on, and he would he would sit on the porch, and then you know people oh. would think of stuff, and then he would move, mm -hmm. and then he would walk around the side of his house, and um, it was always like you got to go to the Michael Myers house, you got to go to the Michael Myers house, and then me and my sister and I don't know who else went there. We're like, where's Michael Myers? And we're asking this like old lady. She's like, oh, hold on. And then we looked, and I we see him sitting at the kitchen table. He's eating <laughs> without the mask on, and he goes, oh, damn it. And then, <laughs> and then he gets up. And he, and she goes, maybe he'll be around. <laughs> and then and then the, the music comes on. The old lady turns on, and then and he walks out around the corner of the house, and he's standing there. And, now let me ask you this: When he was sitting at the table, was he eating beans? Uh, he might have been. I okay. don't. I didn't see what he was eating, but I think that's where the salt came from. It was from. really scary as a little it, kid. It it wasn't it wasn't Michael Myers, but it but was... and and uh, where my grandma was, Country Club Hills. I've heard it was the mayor of Country Club Hills' house. Yeah, it was the kind of thing where you'd walk across the porch to get to the door, and there was a guy, you know, a d supposed dummy yeah. sitting on a bench in the porch. And then he, he would stand up, yeah. but it was set up. So when you ran off of the porch, there was somebody else at the end of the driveway with a chainsaw. Ah, nice. So he'd rev up the chainsaw and chase you down the driveway. That's wonderful. Oh, that was one of the spookiest moments that just happened when she goes to the neighbor's house, begging, screaming for help, and you see him through the window, turn yeah. on the light and look out, and then mm. they just shut off their porch lights. Yeah. Not my problem. You know, that was the smartest thing they could have done. <laughs> <laughs> or else they would have been murdered. <laughs> this is creepy. That that the yeah, the fact him. that it's a lockdown shot. Yeah, just far away, and he's just getting closer and closer yeah. and coming right towards it's the not, camera. It's not trying to get crazy. Yeah. Open the door, Tommy. Or you know, you can keep running to other houses. <laughs> Hurry up, you little brat. <laughs> Paul Rudd would never make me wait outside that long. It would be funny if Tommy walked to the, the door. Like <laughs> <laughs> no one can see what you're doing. I'm doing the exaggerated... Oh, the Paul Rudd, uh, when he, she tells him to pick up his dishes in yes. Hot American Summer. Yes. Yeah. The exaggerated... Uh. Uh, I'm irritated walk in slow motion that Paul Rudd does. That would be great. I wonder if Paul Rudd's ever talked about his experience working on Halloween. 
Probably not. I'd, maybe nobody's ever asked him. He's probably on the set for like two days. No, he's the main one Was of the he? main characters in Halloween Six. He's in oh, the six. whole movie. Six. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. No, he's not. That's not. That's not Paul really Rudd. Paul Rudd. We're calling him Paul Rudd because that's his character. Because <laughs> he grows up to be Paul Rudd. That kid probably grew up. Oh, it's the same character. Same oh, character. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I get it. Same they, character, grown up. Towards the end of the series, they got desperate in drawing <laughs> connections to the Yeah, original. okay, yeah. okay. As uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, she had to make her Activia commercials and do other things. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be part of this anymore. This is this is silly. Mm -hmm. So they're like, uh, the little kid grew up. <laughs> uh, the, the step sister of the little kid grew up. <laughs> oh, yeah, they imply in Halloween 6. Jamie Lloyd, the little girl from part four and five, she's been abducted by the cult, and she's oh. and she has a baby, and they insinuate in the movie that the baby is Michael Myers's baby, even though Jamie Lloyd is his niece. Yeah, and, was and like, when the fuck would Michael Myers have sex with anybody? It's very stupid. Yeah. Oh, and this is speaking of stupid, she just threw the knife away. The only reason she did that is because they needed to have more happen in the movie. Yeah, here he is. Donald, Lu Donald Pleasance is just walking around. Maybe I'll find something. Look out! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Appears to be an alien green yeah. mist in your cop car, sir. You've got a giant green light on inside your car. I had to light the inside of the car so we could see the cop. Yeah. No, I like that it's green. It gives it a weird uh, atmosphere. There's an alien invasion going on at the same time that Michael Myers is going on a killing spree. And okay. He's, he's, that cop is fighting off unrelated aliens. Yeah. That's possible, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> possible. So yeah, now she threw away the knife. She goes upstairs. No knife. She thinks it's over because she stabbed him with a knitting needle. Have, have they ever done a movie where two amazing, unbelievable things are going on at the same time that are completely unrelated? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. I, think, I think we would just get horribly confused. <laughs> so what happened to this little girl? Did she grow up? Did she get um, Halloween? She, I don't think she's in any of the sequels. She grew up and became a prostitute, so nobody talks about her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they never tried to milk that. Let's bring the little girl back. I guess they figure Paul Rudd, you got one character back, that's enough. They might address it in that. Oh, but th that's not his sister. That's the other uh, neighbor's kids, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, tying, tying that flimsy closet door together, that's sure to stop Michael Myers. <laughs> She's doing what she can She's doing in what a she stressful can. situation. Don't jump, judge. jump out the fucking window. And she, she, she dropped the knife that Michael Myers now has, so she has no knife. It, it leads to a great visual of him busting through the closet door. Yes. Which was paid homage to in Hard Ticket to Hawaii, of all movies. I don't know if it was intentional, but there's a scene just like this in Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Doesn't the, the light bulb comes on too for a second when he busts through the the closet door? Does it? I think so. Not as a like a mistake or anything. It's like part of the scene, like sure. him his hand reaching through. Okay. And it lights his face up. I believe. I haven't seen this movie in a long time. And this, oh, yeah, yeah there yeah, we go. Yeah. yeah, then you got the shadows swooping back and forth across their face. It's great. Oh, yeah, she sticks a, um, a hanger in his eye. Yeah, this is weird. I, I think it's right after this. She sticks the hanger in his eye, and he takes the mask off for a second. And you see his face, yeah, and he just do. looks like a guy. But I remember... When I was first watching these movies for the first time, I watched part four, and then I was looking at the box for part five, and it was like, finally, for the first time, Michael mm -hmm. Myers unmasked. Because I think he takes his mask off for a second in that. Yeah. And he's still just a guy. Like, why make that a big deal? Well, that, he was like completely, in five, he was completely silhouetted. Yeah. This, I think it's he's like, his eye or something, right, in five? Uh, it, it's, I remember it being like almost complete silhouette. Yeah. Here it's like, here's this you just, guy. You just see his face, yeah. And they hired this actor to play him mm -hmm. and he's yeah, not, not the not guy Nick, it's he, not Nick Castle right it's just actor man and uh, he has this crazy stare and then they put 
He yeah. puts the mask back on and... Yeah, he just hits a shaft of light, you see his face. Mm -hmm. I think his, yeah, his eye is slightly fucked yeah. up, and then that's it. He's just a guy. Yeah. And that's sort of the point. John Carpenter talked about, you know, the decision of showing him or not showing him. Mm -hmm. Oh look, she threw away the knife oh, again. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> Even Jamie Lee Curtis hates that. I've heard her talk about that. That she throws away the knife twice. <laughs> Little does she know that Michael Myers will not die. I get him out of the, the GD house already. <laughs> the staircase is over there. Hey, these kids are the only reason that Donald Pleasant shows up at the end, because they come running out of the house screaming. Mm. And he just happens to be walking by at that exact moment. It all worked out. Oh, the this, setup. Is, this is a spooky shot. Yeah. Focus is completely on her. There's not like a like a big musical sting. He just sits up. It's so great. And slowly turns his head. Yeah. Very robotic. What? I just happened to be walking by. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 scariest things jumping up at you. Yeah. Yeah. And making loud noises. That's scary, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just focus completely stays on her. It's so so great. So well executed. Yeah. Gives you shivers down your spine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if they tried to make a movie with this sort of pacing and tone now? Like, everybody would just hate it. I guess I should say uh, audiences would hate it. Critics, maybe not so much. Although critics hated this when it came out, right? Oh, yeah, here's they his did, face. They did, yeah. Yeah, there he is. He's just a guy. Guy will get shot six times. Yeah, that's how the second one starts. He runs outside. He meets back up with the cop, and he's like, I shot him. I shot him six times. That's when he starts the start of Donald Pleasance is overacting. <laughs> that got increasingly more crazy as the series went along. <laughs> Oh, here, if you look very closely, you can see creases on her face. Do you see that? Like under her eye? Yeah. Uh, that's because right before they shot the scene, she was sleeping on a corduroy couch downstairs. <laughs> they, they woke her up and threw her in front of the camera. <laughs> so she still has the imprints on her face. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That is a fun movie fact, Jay. <laughs> You see the creases on Donald Pleasant's face? <laughs> That's, That's just old age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love the subtle little look on his face. Like, he's not surprised that Michael Myers is gone. Music kicks in, and then we just get a little montage of all these shots of places he's been. He could be anywhere. Right. It's so great. This is when the score kicks in again. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. There's a little bit of a continuity error here. They show the uh, the living room, and there's the knife on the ground. It's clearly, that was taken from the previous shot where she just throws it on the ground and leaves frame. Yeah. So this is a this was a montage created in editing. It wasn't planned. I'm assuming. No, no, no. But it works. It's a great way to end the movie. Yeah, I think that they mentioned that these are all just extra bits of footage. Yeah, just establishing shots and right. things like that. And, and there's the chiropractor's close, office. Close it on the house, right? Yeah. Directed by John Carpenter. Halloween. I hope we get to see that house again, and I hope Buster Rhymes is involved somehow. N no. That's what everybody said when this movie came out, right? I can't wait to see the next one. I hope Buster Rhymes is in it. I hope 40 years from now, Michael Myers will be in space. <laughs> Killing people on the International Space Station. <laughs> the shape. He wasn't even called Michael Myers because he was no longer a person. That's so, that's so weird. Yeah. Well, thanks for, for watching Halloween with us. I hope everybody has a wonderful Halloween season. Eats all the gimmicky there's Halloween whole, candies. There's their whole cast and crew. <laughs> their production crew. There's like 12 people. That's it. That's the way movies used to be made. Especially independent films like this. That's amazing. Yeah. That's it.
<laughs> only, only 11 people made this movie. <laughs> and then six people on post. And you know, John Carpenter, like, he made this movie just, wor it was kind of work for hire. Like, the idea was already in place to make a movie about a guy killing babysitters. What, what movie was it where, like, the special effects team came up and it was, like, four rows of names oh, across that's, that's the screen? Uh, that's every that's movie That's every now. movie now. And yeah. it went up for, like, ten minutes that's every and Marvel I just movie. started laughing. Yeah, that's every Marvel film at this point. Yeah, yeah. But this is, this is what you can do with uh, a little bit of ingenuity and, and creative filmmaking. And a little bit of elbow actors. grease. Yeah. I don't know, it was boring. It was boring. There wasn't enough kills. 